I could not be more excited about this episode, and I'll tell you why. Coming up next, Background Noise, the Henson Family Podcast starts now. Let's go! Small departure from my normal intro. I was kind of excited. I am, I am kind of excited. So let's just get straight to why I'm excited. Today in the short history of our podcast, for the first time, we have a freaking full house. Yay! Woo. All here. All family members are present. And I'm not talking about nobody's on the phone. We are all here in person. Live. Live. Sitting within feet each other, feet of each other. So for me, it really doesn't, I, we could be talking about paint drying today and I'd still be happy because everybody's here. So let me go ahead and introduce some of the regulars that are with us normally. Amy Elise. Right here. Hello, everyone. Hello. And then we have our oldest daughter, Audrey Ray. I'm back. She is. Again. She is back. Then we have the little bit, Angela Kate. Hi. And then we have the sound engineer that just muted me. <laughs> <laughs> Hands off the keyboard, All Anna. the way from Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Mom is telling me to slow down. Okay. Um, all the way from Lidditz, Pennsylvania, we have Anna with us because she came in and surprised Mom this week and surprised all of us. Oh, uh, Hello. <laughs> okay so <laughs> so that's anna um all right so i think uh how's everybody doing today and how's your week been quite tired why so i woke up at four thirty a.m for work mm, okay i didn't well that's great audrey i you slept know? from nine forty five to seven fifteen. Well, good for so, you. Since you said those times specifically, I'm guessing that is the amount of time that Eden slept. Mm-hmm. How is Eden doing? Give well, us Eden, Eden went down at like eight. Give us an Eden update. She's good. She's got her ears pierced. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so for people who are just listening, tell everyone who Eden is and how old she is. She is my daughter. Sweet daughter. And she's four and a half months old. My That's granddaughter. Right. And your granddaughter, Amy. Mm-hmm. Looks like a nine month old. She a big baby. Weighs like one. She a chunk of a baby. Oh, how do you really feel? What? <laughs> well, that's a good thing. She, she's got rolls just like Audrey did. Hmm. She'll grow into them. Okay, so I think we've got a good topic for us today. It is, we're going to have coffee talk and we're going to talk about our family's journey. I guess you want to call it coffee journey, how none of us, none of us, liked coffee or I guess never drank coffee. And then all of a sudden over time, um, now we're all drinking coffee. I guess you can kind of put an asterisk by me. Um, mm-hmm. I'm told that I drink faux coffee, but, um, <laughs> but, um, so I thought to, to kind of kick this off, I might, um, read just, uh, I've got a few fun facts that I'll pose to, to the group and just see if you know the answers. Um, do you know what country grows the most coffee in the world they they produce a third of the um, world in the yeah let me back up and say that they produce a third of the world's coffee brazil you um, looked at my cheat sheet didn't you no okay is it brazil i'm gonna, guess, brazil? I'm gonna guess brazil as well because i think i'll guess brazil too is that your final answer <laughs> yeah I guess Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, oh, and by the way, Anna and I are sharing a mic, so um, she may sound different, um, and I might say sound different over time. So, okay, what country consumes the most coffee per year? I guess the number of cups per person each year. I thought it was us. No, not according to the internet. Is it a European country? Country. I want to say, I want to say or, France. I don't know, but I'm going to say France. No. My manager asked us this at training, and I forgot. She needs to listen. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> I'll tell you that Anna's going to be going there as part of the Metallica tour. Europe. I have no idea. Spain. Country. Finland. I was about to oh. say that. 
mm-hmm. Finland. Wow. I would not have guessed that. Okay. What city in the U.S. do you think drinks the most coffee? More specifically, seven times more coffee than other cities in the U.S. New York City. Yeah. New and York. Yes. New York. This is what dreams are made of. <laughs> Why is that the song? <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, all right. The most expensive coffee in the world as of 2019 costs about $600 per pound. It's called Kopi Luwak, native to Indonesia, the coffee is roasted after being eaten, digested, and expelled by the palm civet. civet. It's said that they only eat the very best, sweetest, and freshest coffee, cherries, and when ingested, it's naturally fermented, giving it a distinctive flavor. Would you try a, co- try a cup of Kopi Luwak? No, no. Absolutely not. Okay. I didn't think so. I would say no. Yeah. So it's coffee dew? <laughs> yeah, it's coffee dew. Okay. <laughs> Duh. Well, isn't, I mean, not to get off topic, but isn't mascara bat feces? I've heard, I've heard that. Of that. I've, I've heard, heard that. That's true. Audrey, That's something Audrey we need a, to Audrey, check that. <laughs> Audrey now has a shocked look on her face. <laughs> we need to check that fact, <laughs> if it's a fact. All right. And then Americans spend on average $1,092 on coffee per year. I believe it. Except yep. for Audrey. Um, and then you would need about 37 gallons of water to grow a coffee bean. Mm. More than 1,300 gallons of water are needed to produce one 12 ounce cup of coffee. That's what you need to wow. grow next. Water? What? <laughs> coffee a beans? singular bean. Maybe that's why Brazil, <laughs> you know, produces so much. Don't they get a lot of rain? Yeah, the rainforest, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about our journey into coffee we have with us of course the family and one former barista one current barista and two heavy consumers of coffee and then myself <laughs> the consumer of faux coffee <laughs> so you need to explain well, what faux yes. coffee tell, is tell, yeah tell okay. everybody what you mean by that okay so when i started out i didn't like coffee at all and I would like going down the coffee aisle at the grocery store because it smelled good. And I always wished I liked coffee because it was always free at work. But I just didn't like it. And I generally have a problem drinking things that are hot anyway. And I know there's iced coffees, but um, I just didn't like it. So when Anna was working at Summer Moon, which we'll get to, she got me to try the, what was it? Um, Espresso milkshake. Espresso milkshake. And so I tried that. And I really liked it. Only I only they normally comes with two shots of espresso, but I like mine dialed back to one. And I said I would gradually work myself into two, but never really got there. And then when we moved Audrey to Maryland, I tried the <laughs> McDonald's caramel frappe for the first time, and I've just been hooked ever since. And so that's, I've, mom's told me that there's really no coffee in that. So, <laughs> well, I read that. So I don't know if that's true. I think that is true. But I did read that. It's just a milkshake. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's darn good. So, but I have I I do like a little bit of coffee in the espresso milkshake. So yeah. Well, like you had one shot, and then we were hoping you would progress to two. You tried two. Ugh! Like just, you could not do it. It was just a little bitter. I mean, mm. a little strong for me. Yeah. So weeny. Yeah. So how did everybody get in? Okay. So, Anna, did you start drinking? Well, I guess, let me back up. Audrey, you tried, I know you tried your first coffee when you were 12 mm-hmm. in Atlanta in the CNN Center. I remember specifically because Lauren Isidore bought it for you. I don't know if it counts, though. Why not? It was like a, it was either like the vanilla bean frappuccino. Yeah, a dad drink. A, a, a faux drink. <laughs> or like a chocolate chip one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those don't have any one. kind of coffee in it, right? Well, if it did. does, it's very little. It does, but I don't remember if I got, I'm assuming I got it with. Probably so. Yeah, that was my first one. Okay. But then I didn't really drink much after that. And then. I didn't really get into actually drinking coffees until more of high school. Okay. Did Anna have a impact or. Um, yeah. So Anna, let me scoot the mic over. How did you get into um, coffee? Um. Well, I honestly, I think the first time. I like tried something. I was like, "Whoa, wait, that's actually good." Was summer Summer Moon? Um, 
And it was me and Audrey that went. Audrey, I don't know if you remember this, but I think it was like you wanted to try this coffee shop because you like heard about it or like you tried it before. And then I was like, I'll go too. I don't think I'll get anything, but I'll go. And then you got like a mocha moon, which is like yeah. their version of like a mocha latte. And then I think I got like a hot chocolate and a cinnamon roll. <laughs> you know? And then I tried a little bit of Audrey's and I was like, wait. That's pretty good. That's good. Pretty dang. Um, and so, since then, like, that's where I was like, wait, this is actually kind of cool. I like this. And then I would go to work, like, do schoolwork there in the mornings before school. So I'd, like, get there right when they opened at 6 a.m. I remember that. And that was your getaway. Yeah. Hook, line, yeah. singer. And so, and then I slowly, gradually just started introducing myself to, like, a little bit more, like, I'd get the mocha moon like Audrey and then I'd slowly get less sweet stuff mm -hmm. and then here I am. <laughs> yeah, I remember you would disappear to Summer Moon and I spent um, so much money there. Yeah. That's okay. We still do. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I was there this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple days ago. So Okay. So at some point, Anna, you transitioned and started working there. Yeah. Um, um and so when you started working there, it seemed like that's when it kind of changed for a lot of us in the family yeah I mean we all love summer moon yeah I know so I'm like I'm like your dad I don't like coffee never have and it doesn't matter if it's dressed up in tiramisu you know I just I didn't like it now it smelled great too but I didn't care for it and so um I guess it really wasn't until summer moon came around that I started Okay, so I'll try this or try a little taste, and you know it's sweetened and it's got you had to mask all, all a the lot good, of it. yeah, all the good stuffs in it, and so it still took you a while because I think at, at first, the beginning yeah, it was like just it. the frozen hot chocolate. Yeah, it was the frozen hot chocolate, and they there's no coffee in it, and um, but slowly, you know, I started um, trying it. That wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. that long ago. Angela, was it the same for you, right? Was it like... Uh, yeah, I moon? hated Summer coffee. Moon, hated the moon. <laughs> yeah, because I remember you worked there. I hated it because you would... You said you would like... I think you brought some drinks home every once in a while. And yeah. so I'd try coffee when it'd be nasty. <laughs> but I remember you got me to try a chai. Oh, yeah. And so, of course, I didn't have any coffee in it. But I drank that for a while. Like, any time we would go there... And then I don't really remember the first coffee drink there that I started to like. Maybe it was a quarter moon. I think it might have been like a version of the mocha moon, though. It could have been a mocha moon. And we kind of, you know, made it a little bit sweeter. Yeah. Or added like, only did like one shot of espresso yeah. or something. And then you're like, ooh. But honestly. And the next thing you know, you just started. I think it quickly them. progressed for me. <laughs> like, yeah. after I got yeah. hooked, I, I like was full force giving me the caffeine. Yeah, you went coffee. from a pretty milky sweet latte to yeah. now mm -hmm. not so sweet. You can even drink a okay. A drip coffee. A drip coffee. You can drink a drip. I don't do it black, but maybe like Ew. milk. But she can drink that. Oh, and so I'm not there. It's not my I'm preferred. Not there. I don't want to be I'm, there, a, I'm a latte. And yeah. so Anna, now mm -hmm. you had a friend at work that was selling a espresso machine yeah and a pretty good one yeah and um it's a breville is of course at this point i i don't know anything about it but you ended up buying it yeah i did yeah brought it home <laughs> and it and it's it's no small machine it, it's a big one big it's one boy. of the big espresso mm -hmm. machines and so it's on our kitchen counter at home but um but you didn't really take to it i'm i'm thinking because you Worked with coffee all day, maybe. Yeah, I was kind of impatient. Um, one, yeah, I worked with coffee all day, so I thought I would enjoy, you know, being home making things. Mm -hmm. But by the time I'd be home making things, I didn't want to. Because I think we'd be like early in the morning, and like I have a place to go. And I'm like, okay, I need the machine to heat up. Yeah. Yada yada yada. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, and then you have to have the right beans, you know, at the right grind and, and all that. Yeah, it was just, I just kind of, just bought coffee instead yeah and i i enjoy that's well that's one of the things is like i enjoy like going to coffee shops like the whole experience of like 
going to a shop, trying something, maybe like a signature drink that they have or something, and then getting the ambiance of the place. Mm-hmm. And you so, can get those on YouTube. What? You can search coffee shop. Can you try their signature lattes? Mm, no, but you can okay. make one. Make it's, you can make a fake ambiance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, you know what I mean. Yeah. There's experience, experience of it. going out and doing that, and yeah. I, I enjoy that. I think that's really what mm-hmm. drew me to it. And so making it at home is just, that's just work. <laughs> right, especially because you work at a coffee shop. Mm-hmm. is insane, so. Well, I know the, um, so for a while after we got the espresso machine, it actually went in the attic for a while. Mm-hmm. And was it a cockroach in it? Oh was, my yeah, it wasn't being used. And so, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I ended up getting it out of the attic. And so yeah, now it's on the counter, completely cleaned it and had to. Angela, what if the cockroach was still in there? Anna, don't even, don't even think about it. No, it's like, no, it's not in there anymore. It died. I don't know if you can tell, it's but gone. she hates, absolutely despises cockroaches to a different level. Of most yeah. humans. So, anyway, let's not talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we did. It I, I cleaned it. <laughs> Air so. quotes. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so so it kind of changed for me a little bit even more when we got the espresso machine. I started playing with it. And um, so, I, I mean, I use it pretty much every day. I'll have maybe a latte. I'll make it home. And, and you're right. It is about the experience for too so i enjoy that time when it's maybe quiet and i'll go get my coffee and and go sit and relax and so i do like that and i do love the coffee shop too i like going to a coffee shop sitting and enjoying that too mom is the drink that you make at home Mm -hmm. different than a drink that you would order at a shop yes for me explain okay So we're going to go back to Summer Moon because I love their Mocha Moon and um, they have this magic milk called Moon Milk and I just can't seem to make mine like that. I've tried, just can't do it. I don't know what it is. So I do like mine, but Mm -hmm. man, I just don't have the touch. But so I I tend to make caramely, caramely ones at Mm -hmm. home. Audrey, what's your go-to? Mm, lately, it's been caramel. Mm. No, I take that back. Caramel. It used to be caramel. Now it's more white chocolate. You've been going after the white chocolate. Mm-hmm. Is that mm. when ordering at a shop? or Because I know you have a machine now at your apartment. It doesn't change. You just, you're just... <laughs> Unless they have like a the featured way. flavor. Okay. Yeah. Like, like what was seasonal, the one that you tried? Like a seasonal one. I recently had a toasted macadamia. Yeah. That was good. Latte. Yeah, so um, Audrey just got, came into a little bit of extra money, which is fun, I guess, with taxes or something like that. And she ended up buying a, a little espresso machine for her apartment. And a grinder. And so, yeah, so she's been enjoying that. I used to have a Nespresso machine. Now I have a legit one. Can you tell the difference? Real. Yeah, can you yes. tell the difference? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Angela, what's your go-to? Mm, well, usually it would be... Oat milk, like an oat milk latte. I either do just vanilla or honey, but today I think I'm liking cappuccinos. With I do almond milk cappuccino with one cup of vanilla. Mm. That was amazing, and so I'm going to do that for my shift drink at work because that was really good. How much espresso is in a cappuccino? For ours, it's two shots. Okay, and then. About five ounces of milk. So. There's more foam in a cappuccino than there is like a latte. Is that mm-hmm. is that the main difference? I was just wondering about Primarily, that. Primarily. And I mean, they're in general a little bit smaller. Like the ratio of espresso milk to, to milk. It's, it's yeah. a pretty strong coffee taste. Stronger. More, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. It was good though. Yeah, those are pretty good. There was a while that I did a similar thing. It was like an oat milk cappuccino yeah. with like honey and then cinnamon dusted on top. Oh. Honey is so good. Yeah. That's still probably a drink that I'd go for. Or like that combo of like mm-hmm. the cinnamon honey. Mm-hmm. That's usually one. Yeah. Or if I'm trying new coffee shops, trying their like mocha latte and just like using that That's as like a good baseline. baseline. Dad, do you have a go-to <laughs> drink or... Called McDonald's. Or is it just... 
frappe? You know, right now for me, it's I'm stuck on the frappe for one because I like it, and then two, yeah, they're good. I've, I've had one. Yeah, I mean, I like it, it. just the the cost of it too is, you know, has, is fact it's factored in too. So I know we were joking around yesterday the other day about me and mom only having three dollars and ten cents in our bank account and. Um, I could almost get one, you know, at McDonald's for, for that. So, or you know, we yesterday we went to this really nice coffee shop. Great vibe. I know where this is we going. We all got some lattes. We got some bakery items, and Dad he had a nice big old Coke bottle that he bought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all well, have our was, little coffees, and he's got his Coca Cola. It was really um, messing up Angela's vibe when she was trying to take a picture. I had to move it. This yeah, giant Coca Cola bottle in in the picture. So yeah. So I've got a question. So Angela, you work at more of like a bigger chain, mm-hmm. and Anna, you did you worked at Summer Moon, and then you worked at Dutch Dutch Brothers Dutch Bros, <laughs> um, Dutch Bros chain. So what's the biggest difference between a like a Summer Moon type place and more of a you know, corporate, also quote unquote, corporate tra- uh, chain that's out there. I guess like a Duncan too. So I know Audrey likes Duncan. She'll go there every once in a while. So what, what's the biggest differences there? Um. Well, first off, I would like to say I love everybody at both of these places. <laughs> <laughs> um, I worked at mm-hmm. both Summer Moon and Dutch Bros, and I had good experiences with both. Yes, they were very different. Um. You know, your local coffee shops, they are not thinking about like mass production um that it's more quality instead of how much can you get to however many stores you have and you can taste it like um smaller batches roasted everything like that the quality and like the training that you get um like training the baristas of like the small things that would make a big difference whenever you're you know pulling your espresso that i've noticed you know coming from both they're very very different training um because their purposes are very different like dutch bros is how fast can you get everything out which you know is important being a drive through and having those drive window times but um you know it sacrifices a little bit um but you know they had a goal and you know they reach it um summerman is does the same just you know different goal it's more of the quality and like the flavor I think personally, um, and the training that goes behind it and, you know, what they're using, all that stuff. So, yeah, I don't know if Angela has anything that. No, I'd agree with that. Like training wise, of course, I haven't worked that like the company I work at. It's not like a huge chain. Of course, we have a drive through. So we do like prioritize getting things out fast. But I think we're a good mix because we also have a good like sit down we actually have like a in store whatever shop um that has like the aesthetic and stuff but training and then i know like nowadays if you go through a drive through i guess the smaller companies they have like the more traditional drinks and i think we talked about this the other day like a macchiato Mm -hmm. like a macchiato at these smaller companies it's going to be an actual macchiato which is espresso and then a little doll of a phone. But, like, these bigger companies, they're going to go with your caramel like, macchiato. The caramel macchiato, like, down. at Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. So it's more, like, traditional-based coffee drinks at your smaller shops. Well, I mean, and also, like, the the smaller local places, like, your baristas have more, like, of a say. Like, yeah. oh, like, I think this would be a cool, like, drink of the month. Or like being able to have those like competitions compared to like a very corporate like yeah, this set. is like the standardized menu and like you have to follow X Y and Z rules. So probably a little bit more what uh, creativity. Yeah, at your local shops, even amongst all the employees. Yeah, like in Lidditz, so. there's this little coffee shop called Slate that I really like. Oh yeah, and it's like they'll have like their barista of the month and like have their like picture up on the wall and like their favorite drink that like they recommend you to get and like all like their their favorite type stuff. It's yeah, they don't have their to... local bakery items that they switch out every week. Yeah, they don't have to follow stuff. the franchise rules. Yeah, and yeah. so you can 
see the difference and yeah. it's more enjoyable i think mm -hmm. if, especially if you're the person that likes to experience like going to get something mm -hmm. so okay yeah okay so i have a quick question for the two baristas yeah um is there one coffee story and it doesn't have to be you know a customer or, or it could be or it, could be. or it could be, right? They're nameless, so, but just some sort of story that you could, that you could come to mind. Good or bad? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know, one of each or mm. just something memorable and, you know, mm. just something you remember. I guess I can start off good. It's not like about coffee, but it happened at work, I guess. And so one thing, like, again, I said my, the place I work at, it's a good mix of, like, corporate versus a small company. And so we know our regulars. And it is fun to know, like, and get to know your regulars. And and so I have, I think I talked about this earlier, but a regular, um, they would come in. It's a cute little old couple. But they get the same thing every single time, and we know their order. Oh, I love and, that. Yeah, and so, like, we'll just start up conversations and stuff like that. And so the guy, he's a he likes to bake, and so I like to bake. And he ended up, we have a conversation about it, and he gave me his sourdough starter. And so it's just little things like that, how, like knowing how regulars. sweet is that? Yeah. That's so that's awesome. So that's one thing I do like is, like, you see these people, and you get to know them and because you're there a lot of times when they're there and you just, I don't yeah. know, you get to know them a little bit more. And so side story, mm -hmm. like 10 seconds worth, you're now making sourdough yeah. because of that. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's, that's a great story. What about you, Anna? Can you think of just something that stands out? Um, I I'm, can't think specifically off the top of my head a customer experience. I bet I could, but mm -hmm. at this very moment. Um, most of, I, one thing though, is most of my friends that mm -hmm. like I've grown really close to have been my barista coworkers at Summer Moon. Mm -hmm. Like, cause, cause whenever I started, it was right before COVID started. That's right. And yes. It was just a whole mad experience, you know, cause all the other local coffee shops shut down and then Starbucks also shot da uh, shut down. They did? Yeah. Yeah, at least for a brief period of time. And so um, we, we were the coffee shop open, and um, caffeine remember. addiction is real. And so people would, <laughs> oh, it was like people waiting over an hour for their drinks. But, like, that was as fast as we could go with the size of but our. y'all stayed open. Yeah. I remember that. And so, I mean, like, you get to know your coworkers going through a situation like that very well. And, you know, they're still probably my best friends today. Yeah, I'd you're say. still hanging on to a lot yeah. of your your friends from those days. So I'd say that's probably my happy experience I yeah. can think of is just the people that I got to work with. Yeah. yeah. What well Audrey, um, what about you? Any kind of coffee experience that comes to mind? Mm. What what about um what about your coffee bar? Like did you didn't you do something at your apartment with your with your house? Like you've transformed part of it. I turned a whole wall in my apartment to a coffee bar. It's actually legit. Yeah. It is legit. I got all the sauces, the syrups, a nice machine now. What a about a little place to sit? Do you grind do you grind your beans or do you I have a grinder. Okay. That's been nice. And it's like it's and I get summer moon beans. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> high quality coffee cuz it's good beans and then <laughs> I like it cuz you got the iced Cups. Oh yeah, I got to go cups. Yeah, <laughs> so it's literally like you're getting like a, a cup from a coffee shop because it's like a to go bar. cups. It is. Yeah, yeah she has a, a little sign, the Saccarello Coffee Bar, and you know we know apartments aren't huge, and so to dedicate an entire wall mm -hmm. to coffee, it saves money. That, that in the says long something. Run. Yeah. It really does. I, I would say we have saved a lot of money making our own coffee at home. It's been enjoyable. So. It's just a lot different than it was for us, mm -hmm. what, a few years ago when none of us liked coffee. Diet Coke was about all we had. Yeah. Well, me and you, Amy. <laughs> That's how we got and, our caffeine And now, mix. now when I'm, I'm at home at work, <laughs> I work from home, so I'll get a text message from Amy when she's on her way, put the dog door in, turn on the espresso machine. That's right. <laughs> just about every day. <gasps> oh, That's good. All right. I think that's going to do it for our coffee talk. 
We thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments about the podcast, you can email us at podcast at hensonfamily.me, podcast at hensonfamily.me. If you're considering adding a furry friend to the family, please adopt Don't Shop, and we will catch you guys next week. Thanks for listening.